I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to dive into this because we're going to get very tactical. We're going to get into the weeds and the presentation will be shared so you can dive into this again a little bit later. But let's jump into exactly how you do it. It starts with research. And I think all of you will probably know this, but researching the actual intent behind why people are doing the things that they do online is something that should probably be taught in universities and colleges around the globe. It's actually that important, but we don't think about it that way. But search intent at its core is one of, in my opinion, the most important psychological concepts that humans and marketers should actually understand. Because if you understand the search intent behind people, you can understand how to satisfy that search intent through your content. Not only that, as a human, it makes it easier to navigate the internet and nobody will ever ask you if you Googled something because you know how to Google everything and you know how to get to where you wanna be. But the things that you can look for are essentially falling into these four buckets, informational content, commercial investigation, navigational or transactional. And when you are ultimately diving in to better understand your customers, you should be asking yourself, what are the things that they are typing across the board with all of these different keywords? When they're trying to get a guide in our space, in our niche, what are they typing into Google? What are they asking in Google? When they're trying to make a decision around your product versus the next, are they typing in best variations of your industry, best variations of your space and your offering, your service, your product? These are the things that they're typing in. If they want to reach your website in particular, they might just type in your name. They might type in an offering that you have. Or if they're further down the funnel, they might start looking for pricing or discounts and things like that. These are the things that you need to understand. These are the things that you want to consider as you are starting to build out the research around your strategy. But it doesn't end there. A lot of people would say it does, but it doesn't. You also want to do things like Reddit research. I love doing Reddit research because it gives you the ability to better understand what I would call content market fit. What is content market fit? Content market fit is when you have an audience that you want to influence, an audience that you really want to create content that they will love, they will adore, and that they will appreciate that you have developed it. That's the market that you want to connect with. If you can create content that this audience loves every single time, you have content market fit. And Reddit is one of the best places to go to get there. The Reddit is also a great place to get told where to go and how to get there. So you have to tread lightly, but Reddit is an amazing channel. It's an amazing channel for research. If you go to Reddit today, right now, and you type in site colon your URL or a competitor's URL or any website that you like, and you sort that content by top posts, the results that you are going to see are the most influential and interesting pieces that Redditors found on that website. And that's amazing. Because Redditors are harsh critics, but if your content is showing up in the top posts, then you have struck lightning. You have identified a piece of content that is content market fit. For example, this piece, HubSpot, you type in their site, you type in their URL. This piece on Ben and Jerry is the top post that they have ever published on Reddit. It was created six years ago. Do you know how long ago that is? I had zero gray hair six years ago. Lots of changes happened in my life. I might have read that post back then, but I don't even remember it. You fast forward to today, HubSpot can take this exact same piece, this exact same blog post, share it as a Twitter thread, re-upload it with a new spin, a new take, upload it to the exact same subreddit, share it, and guess what? It's going to go right back to the top. Why? Because humans are still the same chemical makeup that we were six years ago than we are today. And we still get invoked and inspired by the same types of stories over and over again. This is the reason why Disney can continue to roll out multiple movies about The Lion King decade after decade and continue to smash records hits. It's because we as people just want a good story. And a good story is a piece of content that has content market fit. This is what we should be doing. We should be thinking about this type of content and then creating content and stories that ultimately are going to move the needle for our brand. You go into these subreddits, you smash that all time setting, and it's going to give you all of the best content within a specific subreddit of all time. So let's say I want to create content that resonates with SEOs. I go to Big SEO, one of the top SEO subreddits. I sort content top of all time, and it's going to show me that news about Google is ranking number one in subreddits on big SEO for content. So what does that tell me? It tells me maybe I should be considering 
creating breaking news around algorithms, around changes, around double eat, all of those things. That's the type of content that our brand should be creating if we want to be present, elevate our brand, and have an opportunity to connect with the people in this subreddit regularly. That is the model. You have to embrace research. But again, it doesn't end there, folks, either, right? Go into Facebook groups. Go into communities where people are spending time. I love Facebook groups. I love Facebook groups because when you go into them, you can see within subsections, let's say a community and a group that is tailored around SEO or tailored around a certain topic like B2B marketing, you go into that group and you can see a post like this, where this person is saying, let's talk about TikTok. I got to an, analyze 4,000 accounts every day and I want to give you all the breakdown. It had 177 upvotes, 56 comments. Great. You know what that means? It means it has content market fit. The industry wants this. The sample size might've been small. Sure, 2,000 people in this group. That means it is capped at being able to reach 2,000 people. I see this, I then say, all right, I'm going to create an ultimate guide to TikTok, mar TikTok marketing. I'm going to analyze 5,000 accounts and I'm going to create a report on that. I publish that. What's going to happen? It's going to resonate. It's going to break the internet. People are going to love it. You start your process with research. You have to be obsessive of understanding your audience and the people you're connecting with. And then you start creating content that's going to drive results. When you start to make that transition from embracing research across keywords, social, audience, SERP, backlinks, et cetera, it makes it easier to create high value content. It makes it easier to start put together the web that you want to weave. NerdWallet has done this extremely well. They know that they want to own all of the things related to money. If you're looking for credit cards, personal finance, loans, mortgages, et cetera, they have top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel content for all of these different topics. And they have done this extremely well because they know that these are the things that their audience wants. So they've structured their site appropriately. They've ensured that the internal linking is done correctly. All of the basics get taken care of. Then they understand and they research what stories are relevant, what do people care about, what do people want, and then they press publish on these pieces of content. But we have to keep in mind, folks, not all brands are the same. Not all content is created equal. Not all audiences are created equal. Some brands, this type of content is going to work extremely well. For nerd wallets, it's allowed them to become nerd wallet, amazing business, right? For you, it might not work as well. You might have to ask yourself, is your business a little bit different? Because when you look at companies like Stripe, their blog doesn't do nearly as well as their documentation guides because their audience is different. They're targeting engineers. They're not trying to reach the marketers of the world who want to read blog posts all the time, who are trying to consume this content. So their blog doesn't generate a lot of traffic. You would have to spend 5K to capture as much traffic as Stripe does through their blog. So not much for most SaaS businesses, B2B businesses, right? But if you wanted to capture as much traffic as they get to their documentation, their engineering documentation, you would have to spend $700,000 every single month. That's a big difference, right? Because they understand that their, their audience wants great documentation. So they're not writing blog posts for engineers. They might have a few, but they're not that like, they're not generating traffic for them because their engineers want documentation. So they're creating documentation to reach their audience and it's giving them a ton of traffic. How do you come up with that? By researching your audience, by understanding your audience and understanding that not all content needs to be blog posts, right? And this is happening across a lot of different industries, right? You look at MailChimp, you look at GitLab, Shopify, Spotify, et cetera. All of these companies are starting to realize that API documentation can actually be a very valuable source of traffic. But Ross, these aren't blog posts. My mind is blown. How, what are they doing? They're creating API documentation and they're getting traffic. This is going against all of the things that we represent, right? Arguably, all of this content is just that, content, right? Yes, once in a while, you'll see a few interactive experiences within it, but at the end of the day, they have done their research to understand the type of content their audience wants, and they give it to them. You have to embrace the idea of giving the content that your audience wants. Figuring out content market fit is one step. The next step is figuring out the types of content that they want. Something that I would consider like channel market fit. You want to understand the types of content that your audience wants, the channels in which they want it as well. Because some brands are tapping into YouTube, right? If you look at Shopify, they have an entire YouTube channel where they're going after the SERP, yes, Google, 
owns YouTube, and thus they are taking a bunch of YouTube content and placing it directly in the SERP, they are recognizing that there are keywords that they would have a very difficult time taking. So what do they do? They create a bunch of YouTube videos. And these YouTube videos essentially are an engagement where they hire Liz. Liz comes in, records a bunch of these videos in one afternoon. They're a minute and 25 seconds each. This does not take a lot of time. They throw in some beautiful graphics and visuals and they're ranking in the SERP, generating 1.8 million views, right? That is the approach. That is the process. This is what you can do as well. And of course, you need to have the right tools at your disposal. You should be thinking about tools like ClearScope. You should be thinking about how you can create a content marketing engine, create a content team and develop standards where you can ensure across the board, you're always creating content that is hitting your bar for excellence. Once you have that, once you have those processes in place, then the world is your oyster. But you have to understand that different types of content come with different types of risks. Certain types of pieces of content are gonna drive amazing results. Memes, depending on your brand, could unlock amazing return. But at the same time, for some brands, it's going to be risky, and it's not a risk that you want to take. Similarly, you might want to do some culture content where you're celebrating your team, sales enablement content, digital PR. The opportunities are endless, but we need to think holistically around the content. Again, don't get me wrong. I still think blogging is important. A few months back, Foundation did an analysis of over 1,500 B2B cloud SaaS companies, and what we found is that the brands that are publishing over 100 blog posts a year are without question owning the SERP. They are completely owning the SERP with the content that they're producing. It's a lot of content. And some of you are like, all right, I quit. I'm not going to play this game. You should quit. Some of you should quit. You don't need to keep playing the game that you can't win. If you can't win that game, then try something else. There are a ton of arbitrage opportunities in things like TikTok. There are tons of arbitrage, unless it gets banned and it might get banned in some places. That's a different discussion. But you could also go on YouTube. You can also look at Twitter. You can look at different ways to unlock opportunities, right? More content does drive results, but you have to also ensure that that content is being distributed. This is how you put marketing back into content marketing, folks, right? This is the way that things have traditionally been done. We get all prepped and excited. We open up our dashboards. We're writing the content. We're pressing publish on a blog post. We share it. We clap our hands. The Slack channels go crazy. We did it. We wrote a blog post, right? That's how we typically do it. On to the next one. Let's do another one. All right, we're writing a blog post. We did some keyword research. We press publish. Ah, crowd goes wild. That is a mistake. The way in which you should be thinking about it is that you press publish on this blog post. You press publish on this piece of content, and then it starts to be distributed not only on your primary channels, which are the channels in which you own, but also secondary channels, the places in which your audience are spending time. Are they in communities? Are they subscribing to newsletters? Are they inside of a Facebook group? And then you're starting to maintain momentum. You're maintaining momentum by repurposing, repackaging that content. You're uploading that article that you wrote to medium.com. You're uploading that post on medium.com directly into LinkedIn as a LinkedIn article. You're taking that LinkedIn article and you're turning it into a carousel four weeks later. And then you're sharing it in subreddits and communities where you think your audience might find value. This is the new way of doing things. You think like Disney, you stop thinking like newspapers because newspapers had distribution built into their business model originally when they had the ability to have newspapers dropped off at your door. And that was eradicated thanks to our mobile phones. And now we have access to information freely every single day. That's what you're competing with. So you have to embrace the idea of distribution. You have to spread your stories through new channels, embrace things like backlink outreach, Facebook communities, email outreach, leverage your sales team, leverage your email signature to distribute your stories. But if you must blog, then turn them into different assets, right? Like don't let your content live and die in a single format. When Foundation writes a blog post on Airtable and how they attract organic traffic, we don't let that piece live and die as a blog post. We repurpose it as an article on LinkedIn. When we write a blog post, we don't let it just live and die on the channel in which it was published. We turn that all the way through to a YouTube video back in the day when I had no hair on my face. Right? Like That is the play. You take content and you turn it into other types of content that can be used to create other types of content. And then you embed that content in the other types of content. This is how you should be thinking about content. Your content assets should not live and die the day in which they're published. And I say that word content assets intentionally because every single piece of content that you create is an asset. It's an investment. 
we have made the mistake in this industry at large of being pigeonholed into this like world of content is an expense. No, it's an asset. Every asset that you create gives you an opportunity to get return. And it's on us as marketers to ensure that that return can happen, right? You want to advance your organization and the content that you're creating by thinking in advance. Can you create a blog post that turns into a Twitter thread, into a LinkedIn deck, into a social media video, into an email newsletter? Can you distribute this content? Every asset that you develop, you could create it once and distribute it forever, right? But you also want to think about business partnerships, like content marketing is a business function. So let's lean into business, right? You want to think about business partnerships as well. I'm a big believer in links. And I think that getting links from your partners, from people that you work with is an amazing opportunity that is oftentimes slept with, but view it not just as like this, this black box, scary thing to do. View it as a business opportunity, a business partnership, where for example, if you're Slack, and you have a million apps that have integrations with your product, you should be looking at organizations like DocuSign or WebEx, Evergreen, Officely, Kona, whoever, saying, hey, we're so excited to have you as a part of our platform. I noticed that in a blog post that you wrote, you're talking about instant messaging tools like Slack. Instant messaging just happens to be a keyword that we're targeting right now. Can you update that blog post to have a link to our instant messaging tool landing page? That's how we should be thinking about marketing, right? You send that email that essentially says, we're looking to elevate our partnership with you as a brand. It's so great that we're working together. And this is something that we'd love to do with you. This is literally a playbook that we execute with our clients every single day. And the backlinks have gone through the roof because we know that there is already established connection between our clients and the brands that are integrating with them. They want to have strong business partnerships. So by connecting with them, learning about their wins and what they want, we're able to identify business partnerships so everyone can win. Business is at the core of this methodology. When you think about SEO, don't think about exclusively writing blog posts and running a few audits. Think higher level. Think about going big, like organizations like SEMrush do when they acquire Backlinko for who knows how much probably millions, but they acquire it and are able to generate 500,000 in monthly additional visits to their site, right? Those are the types of things you should be thinking about as well. And you can go to websites like AquaHire and other sites. Um, you can go to these different sites and you can actually start to acquire, micro-acquire, sorry, I said AquaHire is micro-acquire. You can go to this site and I think they just bought the domain acquire.com, so it might've shifted, but you can go to these sites and you can start to buy sites that would make sense for your business. Um, there was a, a great quote from Andy Krestodinov who said, Google favors directories over service providers because they feel non-biased. So you can actually go to this site and you can find directories like directories of high paying startup affiliate programs, buy it for three grand and unlock all of their traffic and bring it to your site and then start to find ways to get backlinks to your site. To build a directory, it may cost you 10 to 50K but you can acquire one that is already in existence, already has links, already has traffic for three grand today, right? These are the types of things that you can do when you start to think bigger than just, let's write a blog post, let's root it in keyword research and do the same thing over and over and over again. Start making business cases around why this type of stuff matter. And that is where you're able to elevate not only yourself, but the entire industry. If you're looking for more ways to distribute your content, I have a free checklist that is breaks down all kinds of different techniques that you can use to distribute your stories, whether it's Facebook, Reddit, Slack, Twitter, LinkedIn, Quora, you name it, completely free, rawsimmons.com slash distro pack. Check it out if you want more on this topic. All right, thought I was done because I know this has been a lot, but I've got more. Optimization. Optimization is something that we also need to embrace. We need to embrace the idea of creating once and optimizing forever, just as much as we need to think about distributing content forever. Salesforce has done this extremely well. In 2016, you go into Wayback Time Machine and you'll see what their website looked like back then. And you can see that what is CRM was a page that they created. They own the keyword CRM today because they were early in terms of creating a piece of content that just said, what is CRM? They wrote this in 2016 and they ranked for it. But you'll see over time, this piece of content has changed. They've continued to update it. They've continued to improve it. You do not just let a piece collect dust. You optimize it. You update it. 
you add new information, you improve it, you recognize that Google's favoring video, so you incorporate video into your content, all of those different things. That is how you approach it, right? They throw in CRM 101 versus just what is CRM? Because now they're realizing, okay, people want a beginner level. Let's make sure that we are aligned with intent, right? And then they hold on to that for dear life, right? That is the strategy, folks. You have, imagine, just imagine not being long on SEO. A lot of people are going off about, oh, ChatGPT is going to change everything. Everyone's going to go to Google and type in or go into these ChatGPT experiences to figure things out. It's not going to happen for every query, right? Like not every query is going to be satisfied in that chat experience. Is it going to play a role in the way that humans search and navigate the internet? No doubt about it. But there is no question that Google and search is still going to play a key factor in the way that humans operate and navigate the internet, right? You want to play the long tail. You want to play the long goal. You look at companies like Hootsuite, who've been around for years, and they played the long game to win at search. They have one blog post that was written, again, many, many years ago. They wrote this original post, I believe, back in 2016, right? And then since 2016, this piece has been able to capture for them more than 22 million visits. That's 22 million potential people who visited their site, learned about Hootsuite, consumed their content, learned about this information, linked to it, or some variation, all because they continue to optimize it. They optimize it by including new takeaways, by adding third-party quotes, by injecting new research, by uploading videos, by incorporating templates, adding new sections, updating the date, updating old data, and refreshing the imagery to fit the current needs of their audience and the people that they wanted to connect with. This is how it's done. So when you're thinking about optimizing your content, create a checklist, right? Like you look at the rise of double eat. There's a lot of things that you should be looking at as it relates to ways to elevate your content and set this bar for what content excellence looks like and have a bit of an ongoing program and initiative happening within your company where the content is constantly being updated. Take those pieces of content that were published back in 2019 that got a ton of links, got a ton of traffic back then, update them and improve them so they no longer collect dust but instead collect leads and ROI for your business and for your engine. That is what you should do. That is how you need to be thinking about content and running an engine that actually thrives and does results for you. You might be thinking, all right, Ross, that's a lot. Where in the world do I start? It all starts with research, right? It all starts with research. You have to spend the time up front understanding your audience. Take the time to do keyword research. Take the time to do social research. And some of you might say, that's not in my job description. But I'm just an SEO. That's not in my world. I don't care about what groups they're in or what subreddits. That is a part of your job. Because at the end of the day, the search behaviors are actually changing. More and more people are going to channels like Instagram to do search, going to TikTok to do search. I do a lot of search on Reddit. These are all search engines. We might think that Google is the only search engine in town. But that's only because you're playing the game that was played many, many years ago. You have to update with the current times and the shifts in the industry and in the space. And that means shifting to a model where you actually start thinking like a new age media company, right? You throw out this idea of thinking like a traditional media company and start embracing an idea of embracing a strategy that is rooted in research, creation, distribution, and optimization. And of course, you're going to need the budget. And if you have that, if you have the budget, if you're embracing these four steps along your framework of ensuring that you're constantly thinking this way, you will be able to unlock some amazing resources and some amazing results. But you can't do it alone. You might be the only person from your team that just heard this presentation. You might be the only person on your team that actually hears this and thinks it's time for us to put marketing back into, back into content marketing. You might be alone. Don't try to go alone. You have to embrace the idea of sharing this entire presentation with your team. Spread it around the company. Spread it around the org. Give this exact same presentation with your own voice, your own tone. Do whatever it takes to make more people realize that the only way for marketing to be done extremely well is to think about those four factors, research, creation, and distribution. And if you do that and you combine all of the powers within your organization, you will truly have 
a content marketing engine that thrives. Now, if you liked this ClearScope webinar snippet, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so you don't miss out on more great tips and strategies from the industry's best SEOs and content marketers. Make sure to check out the ClearScope YouTube channel for more great content.